to AI Revolution Digest, where businesses get smarter. I'm Jesslyn. And I'm Elias. Together, we show you how AI drives real results. And because the future isn't waiting, let's dive right in. How do you navigate leadership from the Navy to the world of AI-driven finance? That is the question for today's episode. And now let's welcome our guest speaker for the day, Professor Rick Marchis. Professor Rick, thank you for being here. Can you tell our listeners who are you and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Rick Marchese. I'm a professor of management practice at the ESSIC campus in Singapore, and I'm in the finance department. So I teach finance classes across uh, the BBA program, master's program, executive MBA, and some executive education courses. Okay. So for our listeners who are very much interested in finance and who want to break into the finance world with your experience in private capital, how do you see AI transforming financial decisions? Will AI take over portfolio management or do you believe there are areas where human intuition will always have the edge? I think, you know, that's a question that everybody's asking now. And, and I, I, I think you have to go back and look at history and see how history has changed and how technology has impact society over the years. This is this is no different in many ways than, you know, when the printing press evolved and when uh, TV and radio evolved. So what it's going to do is it's, I don't think it's going to make people's lives easier. Ironically, I think whenever you get in a competitive advanced society, whenever you make technological gains, it makes the world more competitive. And actually what it does is it flattens out the competition, right? So if everyone has access to AI, the difference between coming in first place and, and second is going to be much, much tighter than it was, you know, 100 years ago or 50 years ago or 20 years ago. So you're going to see a lot of compression in the market. But what does it do for private capital markets? Private capital markets, by definition, are less efficient than public markets because there's an information arbitrage, right? Information isn't as freely available. So I think that what that's going to do is it's going to make private markets more efficient. I think there's going to be better price discovery. So price discovery is the concept of really knowing what zeroing in on the market value of an asset. So for instance, if you have a company that's publicly traded, investors, research analysts, uh, research analysts, traders, they could be looking at that stock every day, every hour, every minute. So it adds efficiency to it. And you kind of, you know, by buying and selling, you have what's price discovery. Now it can maybe undervalued or overvalued, but the market is going to zero in on a price and trade on that. And the private markets, you don't have that pace and velocity of transactions, right? There's the information is more opaque. Uh, the buyer doesn't have as much information as a seller and the seller doesn't know. So I think what AI is going to do is it's going to enhance the due diligence process. It's going to make, uh, you know, information exchange, information analysis is going to accelerate. You know, this, this happened when I started in banking, you know, in the late 90s. And we were using Excel. I used to ask the older bankers, like, how, how did you do this without Excel? Because literally they had a manual spreadsheet. I never saw one. I'm old, but I'm not that old. But they had a manual spreadsheet. That's where the term comes from. And it was like an architect's table. And you had numbers. And if you changed one thing, you had to do everything manually. Well, when Excel came out, instead of making that process easier, all it did was is it, is it accelerated the iterations that you could do. So it was much easier for people to say, well, what if we did this to the deal? Or we did that? Or we changed that? So AI is even more of that. So I think what it's going to do is it's going to create, and ironically, create more work, more analysis. Um, it's going to be harder to distinguish yourself if you're using AI. Okay? So Private capital markets, it's probably a good thing in the end. I think it's going to make pricing more efficient. It's going to make the allocation of capital and resources more efficient and more effective. Um, I think the downside to it is, you, to your point, your question earlier about intuition, 
is you still need intuition. You still need the ability to come in and make a dis- make a judgment uh, on that analysis. I, I mean, frankly, and, and some people, it's just my opinion, but investments don't get made on a spreadsheet. You know, it's a tool. All mo- All models are wrong, but some are useful. And there was a famous statistician that said that, I think his name was George Fox. So, you know, all models are wrong. They're just a tool to help you make better decisions. And let me say one more thing before we move on. I don't know if you've read a book. I don't know if you know Malcolm Gladwell. He's a writer. He's a journalist. You know Malcolm Gladwell. So he's got a series of books and he's a great storyteller. And what he'll do is he'll find a theme in society and he'll dig into it and put a book around it. And he's got a book called Blink. And I think it was one of his first books that came out. So uh, it looks like you're familiar with it. And the opening to that book is, I think the Getty Museum in California had bought a Greek statue from antiquity for their collection. And this art sculpture expert walked in, he looked at it, and in a nanosecond, he said, it's a fake. And of course, they panicked. They did a lot of carbon testing and isotropic testing, and it all came back good. And eventually, they discovered that it was a fake. So AI, it's, it's a useful tool. It's going to help people make better decisions, maybe have better information. But again, everyone's going to have access to it. So I think it's going to level the field. Okay. Well, thank you for this answer, Professor. Um, our second question was about young professional entering private equity. What long-term impact of generative AI should they be prepared for? And how might this shape career path differently compared to previous generations? I'll keep this one short, but like any technology, you're going to have to learn how to use it and master it, at least at the beginning of your career. You know, the skill set that you need at different stages in your career is going to change. Right. So if you come into investment banking or private equity, you're going to be modeling. You're going to be a modeling ninja. And that's what people are paying you for. Eventually, you're going to grow out of that. Um, you know, AI, I'm sure people are using it at, at uh, JP Morgan. I bet Jamie Dimon doesn't use AI, right, because he's, he's in a leadership position. So he's got people working for him. And his job is is to make you know, one or two difficult decisions. And those decisions that he's making are probably based on judgment, intuition, and experience. So if you're a young person, you're coming into any industry, master the basics as best you can, enough to get in the industry. And then after two or three years, the skill set that you're going to need is going to evolve into something else. But Understand AI, understand technology. Um, you know, again, I, I try to do the best I can at some point just because I wanted to know I have a Mac and I have a PC. I used to have an Android and an iPhone, not because I needed two phones, because I wanted to understand two different operating uh, systems. So it's important. Uh, it's important to understand it, even if you're not using it every day. But at the junior level, you know, find out what skills you need to perform and excel at that level and then and then try to master them. Okay, thank you, Professor, for that last question before we go to the game, because your background is from the Navy. So people are wondering, what lessons from your Navy career have helped you prepare for the long-term risk of AI or the rapidly changing technologies? This is, this is something, I, I don't know if people realize this, but I think all militaries are very aware of the vulnerabilities of technology and of relying on technology. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, in the United States Navy, yeah, we have satellites, we have GPS. It's as good or better than, than other people have. But every ship that's at sea in the U.S. Navy, navigators, believe it or not, they still do what's called shooting stars. They still navigate the way they did 250 years ago. Someone's going to get up on the on the on the bridge, and they're going to have a sextant like you see in the movies, and they literally are going to shoot stars. 
and based on declination and the position in the sky, they're going to chart and say, this is where we are. Um, because, you know, systems fail, technology fails. They, you know, there's a saying, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So if you, technology is going to save you, technology is going to take you down as well. So one of the lessons I learned is, you know, know how to do things manually. Um, I have students and they want to do everything on Excel, which is great. You know what? You need to know how to do it on a calculator. You need to ha know how to do it manually, longhand. Um, so that's one thing I've I've learned because when when things fail and everybody's losing their mind and you still know what to do, uh, you're gonna you're gonna stand out. So be ready. I guess be ready for the lesson. And a, and one or two lines is you know be ready for failure of your systems and AI and know how to operate without it. Well, thank you very much, Professor. So now we're going to play a little game, which we do with all our guests. Uh, basically going to ask you like many questions and you have to answer as many of them in a one minute time lapse. OK, what's yeah. the record? Is there a record? Is there something I can beat? Uh, we I have him. OK, Elias, Let's... on the clock, when you're ready, Professor, we're going to start. I'm ready. OK. What's your least favorite household chore? Uh, washing dishes. <laughs> How do you eat a Kit Kat? Break it or bite it? Uh, I chew right through it. Which fictional villain do you secretly like? Fictional villain do I secretly like? I don't know. I would probably say secret villain that I secretly like. I don't know. I'll say the Scrooge since Christmas <laughs> is coming. If you could turn any activity into an Olympic sport, what would you win a gold medal in? Uh, I'd like to win a gold medal in soccer or football, mm -hmm. but any activity, um, I don't know that, that doesn't exist in the Olympics already. Yeah, that exists. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Excel, Excel modeling. No, <laughs> uh, something a little more, uh, beer pong. Oh, beer pong. Okay. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Ben and Jerry's chunky monkey. Hmm. What's your weirdest nickname? Uh, cheese monster and time's up <laughs> time's up how many questions was that i don't um, know i wasn't counting it, so. <laughs> we'll just say it was more than five thank you again okay. professor rick for being here it's such a pleasure to hear from you again so before we go can you tell our listeners where can you reach out to you where can they connect is there something that you're currently working on that you want to share yeah um you can connect with me on linkedin Rick Marchese, um, you can post my name somewhere. And uh, what am I currently working on? I'm working on a deal in Jakarta right now in the uh, data analytics space. So. Is there something you want to promote? Because some professors, they promote their, their master's degree or something. Nothing? No, well, I mean, it's a private deal. So I work with, uh, other than teaching at ESSEC, I, uh, I, I do private equity investing with family offices in smaller businesses smaller i would say like under 100 million of revenue you know so um but yeah so i'm working on that right now okay thank you everyone for listening and see you in our next episode goodbye